a traumatic childhood and suicide attempt on several occasions where the life of John Henry Ramirez. Childhood trauma is often associated with adverse health outcomes including depression, hypertension, autoimmune diseases, lung cancer, and premature mortality. Traumatic experiences during childhood causes stress that increases an individual's allostatic load and thus affects the immune system, nervous system, and endocrine system. Exposure to chronic stress triples or quadruples the vulnerability to adverse medical outcomes. Recent research has found that physical and sexual abuse are associated with mood and anxiety disorders in adulthood, while personality disorders and schizophrenia are linked with emotional abuse as adults. Born on June 29, 1984, John Henry Ramirez, he was sentenced to death for the fatal stabbing of Pablo Castro in Corpus Christi during a robbery in 2004 that netted him $1.25. Ramirez was sentenced to death in 2008 for the murder of Castro, a father of nine who worked nights at a convenience store in the southern Texas city of Corpus Christi. Seeking money to buy drugs, Ramirez stabbed Castro 29 times. The store worker was taking rubbish out when he was robbed and stabbed as John went on a series of robberies during a three-day drug binge. He initially fled to Mexico and was later arrested nearly three and a half years later. Ramirez, who was 20 at the time of the murder and a former Marine, had no prior criminal record when he encountered 46-year-old Pablo Castro after a three-day drug binge. Castro was taking the trash out at his job when Ramirez appeared, drunk and high. His case centered on religious protections under the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment and a 2000 federal law that requires officials to show a compelling interest to deny a prisoner's religious-based request and to do so using the least restrictive means. The First Amendment provides that Congress make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Texas defended its position by emphasizing its need to maintain security during the execution. Outsiders touching inmates in the execution chamber could inadvertently disrupt intravenous lines, and audible prayer could interfere with officials' ability to monitor for signs of distress. Ramirez's case has had a number of twists and turns. Convicted in 2009, Ramirez's execution was stayed three times twice by lower courts and once by the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled last year that stopping Ramirez from having his pastor with him and laying hands on him when he dies violates his First Amendment rights. Ramirez, who was denied clemency on October 3rd, he was executed over the objections of the current Nueces County District Attorney Mark Ramirez, who opposes the death penalty. Castro's four children filed an amicus brief, opposing Ramirez's wish to pull the death warrant, writing that the decades of delay in Ramirez's sentence had compounded their grief. Texas initially denied Ramirez's request to have a pastor touch and pray over him as he was executed, spurring a religious liberties case heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. Earlier this year, the High Court found Texas had violated Ramirez's religious liberties by denying his pastor's presence at his execution. Ramirez has been a member of the Second Baptist Church in Corpus Christi. Pastor Dana Moore has regularly driven about 300 miles north to Livingston to pray with Ramirez in prison. Texas argued that the presence of a pastor in the execution chamber could compromise security. The state also said that outsiders touching inmates could disrupt intravenous lines, and audible prayer could interfere with officials' ability to monitor for signs of distress. It was the conclusion of a 2004 murder case that drew national attention after the Supreme Court ruled in March that Ramirez's pastor could touch him and pray during the execution. Ramirez, who said he experienced a spiritual transformation while on death row, had requested that more feel my heart and feel when I transition, he told the Washington Post in 2021. It was while on death row that Ramirez met Moore and other Second Baptist Church members. He became a member of the church, despite being a Messianic Jew. Ramirez's case for religious rights ultimately made its way to the U.S. Supreme Court, 
and as he waited in a holding room the night of his planned 2021 execution, the justices stopped the procedure. About six months later, the court ruled 8-1 to one in favor of Ramirez and his request to have his pastor's hands on him as he was executed. After the court sided with Ramirez, his execution date was set for October 5, 2022. On Wednesday, October 5, 2022 in the morning, the 38-year-old was transported from the Polunsky unit in Livingston to the Huntsville unit a 44-mile trek. Once there, he stayed in a holding cell until 6 p.m. When he was walked to the execution chamber, lethal drugs were injected into John Henry Ramirez at 6.27 p.m. inside the state's Huntsville unit, and he was declared dead 14 minutes later, according to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Ramirez had been sentenced to death for the murder of Pablo Castro, 46, who was fatally stabbed 29 times during a robbery while taking out the trash at the convenience store where he worked. Before the lethal injection began, Ramirez addressed Castro's children, Siobhan Hernandez, Pablo Castro Jr., Fernando Castro, Roberto Salcedo, and Andrea Salcedo, his daffer in-law, all of whom attended the execution as witnesses. Ramirez told them he regretted what he had done. I just want to say to the family of Pablo Castro, I appreciate everything that y'all did to try and communicate with me through the Victims Advocacy Program, Ramirez told them. I tried to reply back, but there is nothing that I could have said or done that would have helped you. I have regret and remorse, this is such a heinous act. Ramirez continued, I hope this finds you comfort. If this helps you then I am glad. I hope in some shape or form this helps you find closure. To my wife, my friends, my son, Grasshopper, Dana and homies, I love y'all. Just know that I fought a good fight, and I am ready to go. I am ready, Warden. He was pronounced dead at 6.41 p.m. 14 minutes after the injection of pentobarbital began. The Reverend Dana Moore of Corpus Christi's Second Baptist Church, who'd sworn to the high court he needed to be in physical contact with John Ramirez during the most stressful and difficult time of his life in order to give him comfort, was with the inmate when he died. Texas is among 27 U.S. states that still have capital punishment, with five more executions scheduled through March next year. Ramirez's legal dispute highlighted the balance between an inmate's request for a religious accommodation at execution and the state's wish to respect security and safety concerns in the chamber. Thank you for watching Death Row.